everyone, welcome back to the GRE How To channel where we make studying for the GRE a whole lot more tolerable. Today we're going to be talking about GRE scores and what makes a good one. Welcome back to the GRE How To series and welcome to my new subscribers. Thank you so much for joining the GRE How To community and I am so excited to get those emails every day to learn that I've got a subscriber. Welcome, 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 welcome. We are less than a week from the time I finally take the real GRE test. So wish me luck on that. I've actually been looking at some of the materials I've picked up from the grad schools I'm interested in and found myself looking at the average GRE scores, specifically the average quantitative GRE scores. And uh, I don't recommend doing that right before the test. If you're in the beginning of your GRE journey, like look at those things, set your targets and, you know, stick to your target. If you are, you know, six days before your test, that's not the time where you want to know that your target program has the average quantitative GRE score of 167 out of 170. Yeah, that, it's a little bit of, that's, that is a lot of pressure. So since I had to talk myself down, or AKA my husband had to talk me down, I thought that this would be a great, great video conversation for us to have because we need to both know what is gonna be a great score for us to aim for and what we have to really focus on to get into the grad school programs of our choice. So let's jump in. It's really important to remember that your standardized test score, whether it's a GRE, GMAT, SAT, is one factor of your application profile. So it's really important to do well on it but it's just as important to do well on your essays and to do the right amount of preparation for your recommenders to write a really great recommendation letter for you. And whichever other pieces, if you need to do a portfolio, if you need to do anything like that, those need to be excellent as well. A high test score is great because the higher your score, the less you need to worry about your score getting in the way of your admission. But there are other factors that need to be A plus in order for you to, to get the results that you want across the board. Okay, so that was the first thing that I had to internalize myself. I know I need to score in the 80th and 90th percentile for the GRE, which was my goal all along. I wanted to score above 160 in both the verbal and the math part. So I'm on track. I got psyched out a little bit because of that average of 167, but the one thing you need to know about averages is that there are people above and the people below that average. The thing that freaks me out about a 167 average is that there's only three more points to go, <laughs> but it's okay. The fact of the matter is most people who have a high school diploma and a college degree have been exposed to the concepts, especially the math concepts in these tests. And it actually, it kind of makes me mad that I have to be so careful in, in, in stating that sentence, because I know at least in the United States, the education system is not equal. Hashtag save the education system, save the world. Um, but I digress. Um, the fact of the matter is, if you've gotten to a certain point of the education ladder, you have most likely seen a lot of these concepts before. So it's not all completely new material. What these tests are actually trying to test is your ability to think, recall concepts, and compound them together to solve a problem. That's all it is. It's complex problem solving using tools and building blocks that you've already had exposure to. So with that thought, it's logical to deduce that all of us who fall in that certain category of being able to go to a decent high school and being able to go to a four-year college have the know-how to 
do what it takes to get the scores that we need to get with the commensurate, commensurate? You know me and my pronunciations. Um, with the proportional amount of effort um, required to get there. We are problem solvers. We were born that way. We can do this. So I'm taking this in as much as I hope that you're taking this in too. We can do this. So let's bring this back to you. Say you're interested in going to the best business school in the history of business schools. Go out! <laughs> Not that I'm biased or anything. You would go to michiganross.umich.edu, go to the full-time MBA class profile and see that there is a, an average GMAT score and a middle 80% GMAT range. So for you, if you decide to take the GRE instead of the GMAT, all you need to do is look at the percentiles that those GMAT scores fall under and then match it against the percentiles of the GRE scores and try to aim for, you know, those, those levels and higher. How do you get the percentiles of your GRE score? Well, lucky for you, I have found them and I have linked them in the description below. So you can look on one side, it's the raw score. And then on the other side, it's the percentile that it falls into. So that is how you can figure out, you know, what is the best score for your target schools. I know that for me, I'm interested in schools that require me to be in the 80th and 90th percentile of the history of this year's test takers. But if you do not want to go to a school that requires that bar, then don't, I mean, it's still great to aim for it, but don't put that pressure on yourself. I'm a part of this really great organization called MLT. And one of the tenets that they teach us is to know the bar so that you know what you need to do to surpass it. So if your bar is 60 percentile, great, pass it. If your bar is 80th percentile, great, let's pass it. We can do this. Don't be afraid if you have to take it multiple times. If you are new to this channel, I have shared before that I have taken the GMAT five and a half times. And I do mean half because halfway through the power went out. So I, I hold on to that half because I still had to do it. Um, I don't, I do not plan on taking the GRE five and a half times. I plan on taking it twice. Um, but it's just really important that we just put the work in and make sure that we leave it all on the floor on the test day. If you feel like at the end of your test that you could have done better or you could have studied more, then do so and take the test again. You don't need to be, you know, spending all of your life and money <laughs> on these tests. You need to make sure that you're studying for it right so that you can execute against your plan and rise from there. If this video was helpful for you, please give me a thumbs up and share it if you like. And if you haven't subscribed, now's the time to join the party. It's just getting fun, I think. <laughs> um, as always, let me know the kinds of topics that you're interested in me covering. And I will see you on Friday, a couple days before the test. It's gonna be great.